back after a uh, one nothing loss on Friday against Saginaw, and then a scoreless draw against Ferris on Sunday for the road trip. A tough weekend for the offense, just the third and fourth time all year that the Cats were held without goals, and the first time in consecutive games. What wasn't working for the offense over the weekend? Well, you know, it wasn't for a lack of uh, opportunities and chances. Uh, I think there's there's got to be more of a killer instinct within the, the final third and within the 18-yard box. Uh, and again, like as I mentioned, it wasn't due to a lack of chances. I think that especially when you're on the road, you need to finish your, your, your chances and finish your early moments too as well. So I think that really hurt us on, on Friday, not being able to, to put away some early, really good opportunities. Uh, and then the longer you're able to allow a team to, to stay to stay with you, the more their hope uh, grows. And so the longer the game goes on, the, the more difficult it becomes and the, the margin of error becomes very, uh, very important there too as well. So, uh, you know, credit to Saginaw Valley. They had a really quality goal uh, against us and, and they earned the win. And so uh, that was definitely a tough one. And I think it, it, it hurt a little bit after that to have that second loss of the season, but uh, it was good to bounce back on, on Sunday. Talked about it earlier in the year, your team, offensively speaking, was producing at, I mean, one of the highest levels in the country. Obviously, you have the same roster, you have that same potential, the same talent. What are they not doing now, or what area are they struggling now besides the obvious of just execution that you guys have really excelled at at the beginning of the year? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing, and we know obviously we haven't been talking about this because uh, we didn't want to talk about this, but uh, nobody really noticed besides probably the coaches of the opposition, but Justina hasn't played in over a month, guys. And uh, this was their real first game back on Sunday and at the time when she was she was out she was like the I think she was our leading point scorer she's one of the leading points player in the GLIAC uh, and so she's had she's had a, a tough tough stretch here and with an injury and now she was back on Sunday we had to manage her minutes in terms of what we wanted to do with her obviously we don't want to re-injure or aggravate her current injury uh, but she she came back, and I think it was a big morale booster for them. Uh, we had our opportunities to, to score on Sunday, and so did so did Ferris. Uh, neither team was able to take advantage of those, those moments, but I do believe that we had some really quality chances that I think uh, the team should feel good about those moments. Uh, the only thing that we were missing was just putting the ball in the back of the net, and I think uh, with Justina back, it allows us a little bit more confidence going forward and then it gives us another weapon additionally that makes us back, gets us back to being as deep as we were just a month ago too. Well, like you say, Coach, it's not like there was nothing to feel good about from this mm -hmm. past weekend. The goalkeepers really put in some work. Ten saves for Shanae on Friday, uh, eight for Ava on Sunday. Your thoughts about how your, uh, how your keepers played between the pipes? Yeah, they, they did a very good job at managing the game. Uh, they made the saves. Uh, you know that they were supposed to, and I always say too as well. We need uh, we need the goalkeeper to make a, a a big save on the road, at least one, and and they were both able to do that too, both on Friday and Sunday. Uh, so they they've done a terrific job throughout throughout their entire year. Uh, and if I, but if I, you know if I'm being honest with you too, like Gwen Gwen Kilnan doesn't get near enough credit as she deserves. She's been playing at that center back role the entire time, and she limits a lot of those opportunities. Her and uh, you know, Maria Storm have also done a great job. Maria played as a center back this, this past weekend, and she was able to, to limit opportunities. And she's an individual where she'll go score a goal against Parkside and then we'll play her at center back to secure the win. Uh, so she's, those two are remarkable defenders, and they do whatever needs to be done for the team. So when you have Gwen and Maria combined with the quality of a, a Shanae and Ava, it's difficult to concede goals. So very proud of what they were able to do over the weekend. It's a very very good collective effort, you know, from uh, the back line to the goalkeeper. So then coming up this week, a rivalry match against Michigan Tech on Friday. A scoreless draw the last time we played them in the Dome. Your thoughts on uh, the matchup this time around? And yeah, you know, it's, we're in a good situation in terms of kind of controlling our own destiny for uh, moving forward, not only for the, the conference tournament, but uh, above, above and beyond that too as well. And I think... Uh, if we're able to execute, go out to tech to get a result, I think we'll be happy with it. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of things still in play for the GLIAC in terms of their standings and where those things are. And so we'll have an idea of where we are before we even get to tech. So that's kind of a, 
a good thing, you know, at least knowing where we stand after all the other teams kind of play and then our night game uh, against Tech will be obviously a battle, you know, senior day for them. And, you know, they're going to be looking to to go off on a high note for the regular season and, and get some momentum going into the, the conference tournament too as well. And so and that's what we're trying to do too, trying to score some goals, trying to limit their opportunities. Anytime you go to Houghton, anytime they come here, it's going to be a battle. So I – if we were 17 and 0 and they were 0 and 17 or vice versa, it's it's going to be a, a huge, huge battle, and we just got to be up to the challenge. Got to be able to manage our emotions and absorb the pressure early on that they bring to us. Talked about the versatility of a player like Storm being able to move around depending on what you guys need in any given game, any given moment. How does your mindset change personnel-wise going into this back half of the season, where, like you said, the implications are a lot larger? Are we going to see maybe a little less substitutions, or maybe some people in some different roles, or is it just uh, Business as usual. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, if most coaches, I think, will approach it the same way in terms of, you know, going anywhere between two to four off the bench, given what we need. Uh, and then in the second half, you're looking to, to rotate some of those players back through. Uh, so you take one off and then, you know, you, you let that individual catch a, bre catch a breath for about four minutes and then you put him back in for the next player. You really got to have quality and, and you, can't, you can't allow the level on the game to drop. Uh, and, and that comes from not only the bench, but also the individuals that are in the game, too, as well. I think it's very important that when you get an opportunity, especially this late in the year, that you really take advantage of those moments. Um, and it's easy to, it's really easy to, to fall into the pressure of the big moments and whatnot. I think it's very important for, for us to remind ourselves just to be grateful for the opportunity that we get uh, instead of really, you know dwelling so much on the pressure. Just be grateful that we're in this moment, grateful with this opportunity, grateful in this position to be successful this late in the year. Well, Coach, like you said, the Cats are in a good position late in the year. A lot kind of up in the air for the GLIAC in terms of positioning, but for the Cats, at least, correct me if I'm wrong, or guaranteed at least one home match for the conference tournament at this point. So with that being said, well, what is the importance of just picking up some, carrying some momentum with you into that first round playoff match, knowing it's going to be at least at home? Yeah, it's important. And I think you guys talked uh, about it already within your questions about, you know, can we, can we find the back of the net? Um, and I think if we're able to do that uh, and secure at least a, a point or three on the road, it's always a, a positive experience. And so I think if we're able to do that, we'll be able to provide some momentum into that first round uh, at home. And I think it's... Uh, and again, we were talking about this this past weekend, but last year we didn't always bring back points when we were on the road, and we were able to do that. And I think that's the biggest difference between this year and uh, last year is those ties on the road, getting a point here, getting a point there is ultimately the difference between last year and this year to set us up for a guaranteed uh, match at first round match at home. So I think, yes, the momentum is going to be very important, you know, getting a a good result on, on Friday, that's where it starts. Uh, but also we're very, very thrilled and very excited about the collective work that we've done leading up until this moment to be able to put ourselves in a situation to host a first round game.